So this is my 2001 Ram 3500 and we are going to be installing the catch can today. Pretty much the catch can for this truck is going to run from the breather, which is right there. And I'm going to run it down. The stock pipe's off right now. I'm going to run it down to the front of the truck and hopefully have a catch can located right there. Now there's a couple different mods around to doing this. This is the way I'm choosing to do it. You can do whatever you want. Some people run a pipe up over into the back. Other people have just run some kind of rubber hose somewhere to the back of the truck. It's letting it drop on the ground. Some people say that when it comes up high enough and goes to the back, we'll never notice any drops because it's high enough the oil can't physically get up and back. Plenty of different schools of thought on this. This is just the way that I'm going to do it. It seems to be like the least amount of interference, and I think it'll look the cleanest. So my 2001 Ram 3500, like I was saying, it has 224,000 miles on it. Pretty good truck in all honesty. Um, got a billet tappet cover installed in there trying to chase any oil leaks. On the topic of oil leaks, I went to the racetrack just recently with the GT500, which is still in the trailer. And it came back, still leaking oil out of this thing. Um, kind of disappointed that all the work put into it didn't really seem to have much of an effect. So more than likely, what I think it is now is the actual oil pan. I think it's leaking. You can see some shiny right up in here and stuff. It could be from the front main. Give you that. I do have a front main to install on this at some point, but like all the way back, all the way back. And it's rather frustrating. Something though that I ran across in the forums that blew my mind. Someone said, hey, go check your actual oil pan bolt torque specs. It's supposed to be torqued down to 18 foot pounds. Well, we came out here yesterday just to check. Every single one of these was loose by about a full quarter turn before it clicked to 18. So something worthwhile. The reason I decided just to do that and not replace the pan gasket yet, one, it's easier. And two, the pan, as you can see, has very tight clearances on the two wheel drive. So you basically have to undo the motor in terms of the motor mounts and lift this sucker up as high as you can get it in order to get it to slide back and clear the oil pickup tube, which runs from the front all the way down to the bottom of the pan in the back over there. So it's a real pain in the butt to do it on this truck. I will eventually get to it, but I'd rather just keep you adding oil for now than try and deal with lifting a motor. I don't have a, a uh, motor lift right now and it's just not a bit it's just something i don't want to deal with but anyway that's beside the point so let's get to this catch can so usually it would drip right from there you can see that oil right here is definitely that's all from right where the drip tube comes out so same thing right here that's from that same drip tube so it shouldn't drip too much but it's enough to where you'll eventually get a drop or two and it'll just start kind of coating your truck over time so my plan is to go ahead and mount the catch can pretty much Looks like it is right here. Pretty much uh, somewhere right in here. I want to mount it here, around this side. Kind of thinking like right here would be ideal. So I got some self tappers. This might be a little bit thick for that, but we'll see what we can do. And uh, that's kind of what I'm planning on. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get, uh, I'm gonna show you, actually I'm gonna show you the catch can setup I'm running first. And then uh, we'll come back to this and start working. These are the components that I'm gonna go ahead and use. And I just went to Lowe's. So when I got a catch can off eBay, it's like 40 bucks. It doesn't really need to be anything fancy. This is probably way fancier. Well, what does come on the truck stock is a little piece of plastic that basically, it's a plastic bucket that just hangs under here. The problem is you can't really easily remove that thing, dump it out, clean it or anything like that. And when it does get full, it starts making a mess. It splashes all down your front cover and, and everything like that. So I went ahead and just got rid of mine a while ago trying to remove it. I broke it, I was like, screw it. And uh, every once in a while you'll see a little drip of oil and it basically, it'll come down, spray all over your front cover. So this is the stock piece off the truck. Uh, miscellaneous hose clamps, I went ahead and counted out how many I need, and then two pa pairs of pipe. So I went ahead and got a splicer, and for those of you wondering, it's a three quarter inch inner diameter. So the plan is to go ahead and use this guy. We're gonna shove this in here, and this is just air and a little bit of oil, so it's not gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna get this flush when I need to. And another pipe like this, Go ahead and shove that on this end. And I've measured out exactly what I need yet. Obviously, it's not cut. Then, unfortunately, I'm limited by connectors. This should really, I was looking for an elbow with uh, this on both ends or a size down, but couldn't find it. So we're gonna run one of these on this end. I have to run an adapter because they don't have anything that I can find that lets you flip this around, basically, and just screw directly into there. Unfortunate but it is what it is. So run that that way, run my pipe this way, and it's gonna hang off the front of the truck. Basically down, I gotta obviously cut this straight across and my catch can is gonna hang out right here on the receiving end. So that's the plan. 
I'm gonna go ahead and start basically measuring everything up, mocking it up, cutting pipes where I need it. I'm gonna start by putting the catch can on the truck and all they give you is this guy right here. So it's gonna get hooked up right there and then I got some self tappers to tap into somewhere. I'm hoping across the front, I believe there's a flat piece of metal underneath the radiator that I'm gonna plug it into, but uh, we'll see how that works. This is just kind of an experiment. I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna mount this just yet. You'll find out in this video. So the catch can is 40 bucks. Actually, I think it was like 30 bucks maybe, something like that. Uh, about 20 bucks in hardware. There are definitely easier ways to do this. I've seen, well, not easier necessarily, different ways. Some people will take it and just route it up, down, and to the back of the truck. Um, I just prefer having an actual catch can. And then this is a plug, so I'm gonna take this out and put it over here. So there's a plug, and this guy's gonna pop right on top. So nothing too crazy. And in theory, I, one of the other reasons I like running a catch can in general, I use that one on the Avalanche as well. It helps me monitor how much oil is actually coming out of this thing, if any. Um, this way I can tell where things are leaking, if they're leaking, and uh, that should be pretty much everything I need. So three quarter to half inch is how I was able to get this elbow to like meet up with a smaller pipe. And then, um, yeah, really about it. So let's go ahead and head up to the truck, start measuring and cutting what we need, and then uh, we'll come back down here. Once everything is measured and mocked up, I'm gonna detach it from here mock up this whole thing. I wanna paint this stuff black just so it all looks like one color. That's why the paint's right there. We should be good to go. I might as well go ahead and do before I head up. I wanna go ahead and get the catch can into the configuration that I want. So these things aren't held on super tight. I can get them off by hand, it's not a big deal. The bottom one is the one I'm gonna plug up and I believe this is the right size for our pipe. No, it's a little small. We'll find the right size. I think it's this one. Yeah, that'll fit nice and snug. So, pop this guy off. And they do come with some o-rings so in a normal catch can the way it works the reason there's two entries and exits and that's all the ones you're going to be able to find because generally they run off a of vacuum so one is an inlet oil goes in here gets circulated or the oil air rather goes in here it gets caught and then the outlet goes back to the intake manifold and that's pretty much where uh everything is taken care of there if you're curious the inside diameter this is pretty small so there's going to be some oil sitting in that bottom tube um, but it shouldn't be that crazy amount, to be honest. It really shouldn't be hardly any. So, go ahead and slide this guy on first. And then, I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers or something to crank this down. All right, just something to make sure this is extra snug and tight. Don't know what this stuff's made out of, probably aluminum, but I don't know what these are made out of and don't wanna strip out threads, so don't go crazy. Next up, we just gotta figure out what size this top bolt is. Looks to be Probably a 14, yeah. I don't like using the standard sizes because it gets really frustrating to keep track. But pop this guy off. And then we'll plug this hole up because that's the one we want to get plugged. When you're looking for catch cans, make sure you get one with a plug if you're doing it this way. But like I said, it doesn't really matter what way you do it. There we go, so that's got our one inlet. And then for any air that's gonna escape, Gave us this handy dandy little uh, air filter here. It's kind of cute. And just gotta figure out what size this is. Sweet, this one will work. So we're just gonna pop this on top. Like that. And then once we're ready, we'll be able to put our filter on. Should be easy day. So on there, and then our filter will just sit up top. And all this is gonna do is just let air escape uh, the catch can itself without any issues. So just a breather, really, not even a filter. So it still functions as the factory breather. Although I do have that billet transfer or uh, billet tap cover in there that has two holes in it. Probably don't even need a breather at this point. But I kind of like keeping stuff semi-factory if I can. So that's all we need out of this guy. Got the rest. They gave us an Allen key and then uh, some little bolts up in here for some stuff. So we should be good. Yeah. So let's go ahead and head up the truck get this mounted up okay so trying to figure out how i want to run this best i'm thinking right now that this is the flattest area that i can easily get to and that it'll actually hang out at it's kind of looking around but i'm thinking if i run it from here basically drop it down and just let the line run straight across over to it over here i think that would work probably pretty good kind of out of the way this area is pretty open so I, there's nothing really there so i can just shove it there and i don't want it to hang lower than the frame just in case i do happen to hit anything i don't want it to just rip the catch can off 
So I think we're going to stick it right over here. All right, two little tappers later, we got our thing drilled in nice and strong. This mount is definitely not going anywhere. Weakest part is probably going to be the side attaching to the uh, actual can itself. So I'm going to go right, grab some Loctite so we can make sure we uh, these little tiny Allen screws don't back out and it drops away from us. All right, so these are the two little things that they give you, uh, two little Allen screws, some red Loctite because I don't plan on this thing coming off. So all we got to do, line this thing up, get our Loctite on there, and uh, get them on. Now it's mounted up. Easy enough. We gotta go ahead and pop our little filter on and uh, tighten it down real quick. So now that's on and situated, we should be good there. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put on our little catch tube, run it down, and see where it comes out at. All right, so this is our tube, as you guys saw earlier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick an o -ring, or a uh, hose lamp on here. And we're just gonna run this down. That's tight on that side. Just about like that. And then usually these things are eight millimeter. All right, sweet. Now that's done. Let's go ahead and pop her down. We'll see where this thing falls through. Right. Okay. So now that that's down, it's about where it's gonna hang. That's how I want it to sit. It's going on the other side. And the big thing to keep in mind, I want to make sure when I cut this thing, it has a slight downward slope toward the catch can. So I don't want it to be too high. And hit the crank balancer, but I also don't want it to be too low. And have a basically pool in the bottom of the pipe somewhere. All right, so I want to run it. As you can see, it's hooked up. And I'm going to run it. Basically, I'm going to put a small hole in here, and I'm going to run a zip tie around it so I make sure that this thing doesn't get caught in the crank. And it's free of the fan and everything. But this is kind of at the angle where it's going at an upward angle right here. So we gotta cut this pipe probably right around, I don't see where the sticker line is. It's pretty good, right up in here. All right, got our mark. Let's go ahead and pull this back out. And I uh, went ahead and put a hole in it right there so that's how I know where to cut it. So let me go ahead and cut this guy real quick. Use a hacksaw and then uh, go ahead and shove in our angle piece. Definitely using a lot less tube than I thought we were going to, but it is what it is. Now that's in, you can go ahead and grab this guy, put him all the way in. And I'm not putting a thing on here yet because I don't exactly know. Actually, I lied. We're gonna have it sitting here waiting, waiting to go, but it's not gonna actually be tightened down until I know exactly what angle this thing has to be at. So that's the plan here. Probably gonna throw some well, no, that'll seem to be getting pretty tight. I don't think we need any thread locker on that. Okay, so that seems to be good enough. Then we can still rotate it as needed. That'll just sit there. Let's go ahead and shove it back down. See where she lines up at. So underneath here, I went ahead, oops, underneath here, I went ahead and had this thing uh, all the way in. And then we just need to see where this thing lines up at. Looks like right about here. So we can pull this guy off now and line up that tube next. All right, paint it up. Looks a little more uniform now. Let's go ahead and pop her in. We're just about done. Those right there is now in place. Let's go underneath. All right, so that's the catch cam right up there. And then our tube runs around. I went ahead and put a loose zip tie up here. I don't want it uh, hitting into the crank at all. I also don't want it to hit the fan or anything like that. So it'll keep it steady, but I wanted it loose. So I don't have to replace this every single time. I want to pull this uh, tube out to do any work on it. So I can still slip it out easily. And then yeah, the gun runs pretty much right up there. So easy enough. I guess time will tell. Uh, I'm gonna be going on a drive pretty soon here. It's a pretty long drive anyway. So let's go ahead and make sure that this thing is tight, which it is now. And yeah, guys, pretty easy. Um, I'm liking it. The whole reason I wanted to do it this way was just so it'd stay clean. And I don't really like having oil drips, obviously. But I figure it's one less thing. As long as I know that's not dripping, then I'll be able to figure out where additional drips are coming from. 
Well, that's gonna do it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Something pretty easy. I just figured get the catch can installed to kind of help eliminate one more leak, um, potential leak source anyway. And it looks pretty clean. Also, I do th hopefully tightening up those oil pan bolts. The fact they're loose at all would probably be a red flag, but hopefully tightening them up uh, will have taken care of any kind of additional issues like I was talking about. One other update I did want to give you guys if you're stuck around this long. You may notice my little uh, thing right here is a little bit wonky. Well, fun story about that. So my transmission is actually shifting just about normal now. I went ahead and lengthened out this, um, this tube right here. Not the tube, but the... Uh, TV cable with a zip tie, and this is not permanent by any means, but I just wanted to see if it would do anything. And made it about when it's actually, you know, being being pulled out, probably about, I don't know, half an inch, maybe a quarter inch longer. And lo and behold, there you go. She's uh, shifting perfectly now. So the TV cable is adjustable. I was going to make a video about this a while ago. I didn't, though, because it wound up actually not fixing the issue originally. But you can adjust the TV cable length, and I maxed mine out to be as long as I could be. Still didn't uh, fix anything. So I think this is actually going to take care of the uh, shifting issue, which is awesome. Definitely very happy about that. So I'll figure out what to do about the shifting cable a little bit later. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. As I was saying, the pretty much everything else is I mean, it's coming together. Uh, the catch can hopefully will take care of one issue. Oil pan bolts. I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, not too much else going on with the truck, really. Uh, I got a couple other mods in mind, um, really maintenance, and a few minor mods coming up. And uh, But yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. If you want to message me, go ahead and hit me up on Instagram, all things boost, down in the description below as well. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you in the next one.